Welcome back everybody. And today we're gonna to do an install on a somewhat sophisticated satellite, Wi-Fi, 5G cellular system. And I'm gonna talk about it here and then we're gonna go do the full install and show you exactly what we're doing. So basically what we're doing is we're installing the newest Starlink high performance dish. And I'm gonna open this up in a second. We're gonna show this to you and show you what we're doing. That's gonna go up top and somewhat tilt towards the front of the coach. And you can see the tilt here and we'll talk about that in a minute. Then we have our old Gen 2 Starlink that's here. And then this one's gonna get installed on the back of the coach, tilted a little bit towards the rear. When we get up there, we're gonna explain all that and talk about why. And then in the middle that these are all coming to, we have our Peplink Max 4HD that uh, will take all of the signals from these units into this router. Then it also has four 5G slots for 5G chips from Sprint or, or Horizon or whoever, Verizon, whoever it is you wanna use can go into here. And then it also pulls in Wi-Fi and creates Wi-Fi out of the big antenna that we're gonna talk about. The big antenna's right there. We'll show you this here in a second. And then this router then becomes the main router to everywhere in the coach, Wi-Fi and all Cat5s. Because in this coach, we have hardwired uh, all ethernet cables throughout to the computers, to the TVs, to everything, are all hardwired with ethernet cables. So we're gonna show you this all installed, but we just wanna talk a little bit about this is extremely overkill for a coach. The only reason we are doing what we're doing here is, one is we went to Starlink mobile version, and it's $150. And then uh, we had portability for $140, but now we're going to the mobile uh, subscription on here. So we wanted to get the HD, and I'll show you this in a minute, we'll open it up. We already had this one, so we figured, well, seeing we already have a router, we already have this unit, we can go ahead and just put them both up there and wire them into here, and this is bonded. So the signals are all bonded. So an example is we can take a Wi-Fi or two coming from the RV park or anywhere, we can take a couple of SIM chips for the cellular, and we can drive these two into these two and have all of these bonding together and then stacks our speed on top of each other. Now, it's not 100% stacking. If you're getting 200 on this and 200 this, you don't get 400 total because there is a little bit of overhead that gets taken up when you're doing bonding. The advantage to this, number one is speed. Yeah, no doubt about it. But you know, at these nowadays, these satellites with uh, Starlink, it's pretty much all you need. We've gotten away with just one of these for a long time and it's been spectacular. The advantage is, is you kind of have a little better than failover. You can set this up for failover or you can send it up for bonding. My point is, is if for some reason we lost satellite, we still have our 5G or Wi-Fi. If some reason we lost Wi-Fi, you still have your 5G. If you don't have 5G signals, you have your satellite. You never lose internet. So it's somewhat guaranteed to always be up uh, so to speak. For me, speed is good because we do a lot of video work and things as well. So if I'm remote somewhere and I wanna be able to upload uh, some files to the production team here, we can do it really fast with these and uh, we'll go over that. Now, failover is different. You can also do failover in here. Failover means if you have all these individual pieces, if one drops, it bumps over to the next one and then bumps over to the next one. So failover is the kind of what I think is the next best way. The only downside to failover is you will lose the signal for five, 10 seconds while it's changing over to the next one. So if you're in a Zoom call or you've got a file rolling and that you lose one satellite, you're gonna lose that signal before the next one kicks in. I don't necessarily use failover. I like bonding uh, for many reasons but we're gonna go ahead and, and get up there and show you this. And one last thing to just let you know, we also have the ethernet connectors on the Gen 2s. The new high performance, you don't need that because it comes with it where you got the ethernet that goes right over. Now, the other thing is in Gen 2s, your controller, your power controller is not only your power, but it's also your Wi-Fi unit. And then from that Wi-Fi, we can use the Wi-Fi here or we can just use this ethernet connector and go from ethernet into here. So you have the option. If for some reason you're not picking up this router, you can go right to the Wi-Fi. The new high performance, there's no Wi-Fi in this unit. It only comes with a power unit and ethernet to your unit or ethernet to your Wi-Fi unit. So those are the differences that you have here. Now there's also the new mini mobile that Starlink came out with, which is tiny. It's about this big. And the nice thing about the mini mobile 
is the Wi-Fi is built right into the unit so you don't have an external box like this and it runs on 12 volt. So for in our airplane and stuff like that, we can actually just plug the 12 volt into the airplane, have that little mini with us and when we're out in the bush or something, we can uh, pick up Wi-Fi right from that. Some of our friends like Trent Palmer and things mount the little mini right up in the top inside uh, his plane because uh, he has a clear view and he has Wi-Fi all the time while he's flying and he has the mobile version too. So a little bit about the hardware and stuff here and let's, uh, we're going to do a little unboxing of this unit because we haven't unboxed this unit yet and then we're going to go ahead and get this stuff installed. It should be pretty easy. We're going to remove some of the stuff that's already in the roof because we're not going to be using direct TV anymore. There's a over the air uh, TV up there we're not going to use anymore. There's an old um, wine guard Wi-Fi thing up there. We're not going to use that anymore. So we're going to clean up the deck, change over to these. And then the hardest part is probably going to be as normal in these coaches is running these wires in through the cap and down into our, our little control panel that we have in there where this stuff's going to be sitting. So that's the hardest part. So let's uh, end here. We're going to go ahead and do an unboxing and then we'll jump on the roof and get started. All right. So let's go ahead and get this stuff out and get ready to do the install. Um, if you know Starlink, you probably love them for the reasons I do. Here's your instructions. <laughs> it's that simple. Elon Musk, Starlink, these guys have it going on. I mean, their installs are so easy. It's uh, better than Apple. Now on the back side is really just the install for the actual physical piece. And it's tilted a little bit. And I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Then the back side is so simple. Get your, your phone out, scan the app, get your app open plug in your unit, power, and, and into the antenna, make sure it's clear of the sky, you're up and running. I love companies that have instructions that are like this. And I do wanna to talk to you a little bit as we get into here about why this thing is tilted. So here is the high performance unit. Obviously you can see it's much bigger than the Gen 2, Gen 3, and especially bigger than the mobile unit. It's still pretty flat. It's much heavier than the other units, but all it has is this one area here that's sealed up for the cable and we're gonna put the mount on there. Now here is the mount. Now you might be asking why is it not shooting straight up into the sky? Why is the mount like this? And there is a reason. So basically this is gonna get mounted on the front of the coach just like this. So it's actually pointing forward just a little bit. Now the nice thing about these high performance units are you get 45 degrees more on each side extra, uh, I guess viewing you could call it. So if you look at the normal one we have, you know, you might have it going up at this angle and then this unit, well, let me go this way. It'd be going up at this angle on the old unit grabbing the sky. This unit goes out like this and grabs more satellites. Why are we putting two of these on here? Why this one on the front and the other one in the back? Obviously when we're RVing, we're in a campground. Sometimes there's trees over the back. So if I put this in the back, it might be blocked, even though with this unit being more high performance, grabbing through some of the spots in the trees, it does better. A lot of times the front is not blocked, but sometimes the front might be blocked and the back is not. Well, seeing I already had the equipment, I just decided, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put both up there, bond them into the bonding router. So if the back's covered, the front grabs it, if the front's covered, the back's grab it, or best case scenario, they're both grabbing something and I'm getting even better speeds through that bonder. So, this is basically, these are really popular in yachts. One of the reasons why they're kind of tilted like this is you would put two of these on a yacht. So you would have them on one side of the boat and one on the other side of the boat, port and starboard. So as the boat is yawing or rolling, it's actually the two of them together are grabbing the sky from both sides. So if the boat rolls this way, the other one's grabbing the sky from that side and this one's down more towards the ocean. So that's one of the reasons that they're, they're built like this. So we're gonna do the same concept but on the coach, this one's gonna be pointing forward, the other one's gonna be pointing back. So they're basically gonna be grabbing the sky in the middle, no problem, but now I've basically gotten more horizon because both of them are tilted out. We don't have to worry about the middle because they're both grabbing up in the middle. So we think it's gonna be a really good setup and that's why this is tilted the way it's tilted here. This gets mounted pretty easy. We got some die core that's gonna go up here. We're gonna die core around, we're gonna die core the holes, screw it into there and then we mount that unit on there. So it comes with the cable that goes from this unit down into the coach. This is the one I'm saying is gonna to be tough. That's a big cable. We gotta snake that through uh, some of the holes we already have up there where the coaxials are going for the direct TV satellite. So I'm hoping that we can use the existing cable up there, tape these on it and pull it through. We're gonna see what we get up there. It might not be as easy as we think. Now we talked about the Wi-Fi unit on the other one. 
This is not a Wi-Fi unit. This comes with uh, the high performance, but it only is a powered power unit. And if I can get this open here, here's a tray that you can mount. Mount it, this drops in it. And then here is your power cable, goes to your power. Here is one that goes to your Wi-Fi to your router. And then the other one comes from your antenna. So simple. And then here is the unit, basically, that goes to your coax. I'm sorry, not your coax, but this is your ethernet that comes out of this unit. So no Wi-Fi in there. Let's see, what else do they have here? A power cable, some mounting tools, washers, pretty much everything you need to mount to the bracket there. That's it. Starlink in a box. So simple. Love it. Um, we did try this on the ground. So far, we tested it when we first got it. We just put it on the ground, blocked by the coach in a car, and we put it in between and just tried to figure out how well did it do. We were getting over 200 on this with it being blocked, just sitting, laying flat, just like this on the ground. So we're looking forward to seeing what it does when we get it all installed. All right, great. So I think that's it. We're going to go ahead, get up on the roof. The first thing we have to do is prep the roof, get all the other stuff off there, and get these things installed. Let's go ahead and get going. All right, so here we are on top of the coach. Obviously, we're in the uh, E3 airplane hangar right now. We've got the planes and the helicopters in here, but we pull it in here because it's raining out and keeps the sun off us here in South Florida. So, uh, and we got good light to work on the coach. So we got to prep the area up here first. So the dish, the high performance is going to go right here, right here in the middle, so it's not blocked by the cap here. And then the other unit's going to go on the very back, and I'll show you that when we get back there. So. We have Dicor here, of course. We're gonna be pulling up all of these units first and just clean this whole area up. Reseal, re decor these holes. We got some little pieces of aluminum we'll put down on the top of that and then seal that up. And then we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll start pulling the wires and getting this thing ready to mount. One of the hardest things in these coaches, a lot of these, is getting these wires down through the cap, through some of the beams and then into the electronics panel. So we have to do it two different ways because this is the unit that has to go down in to the Wi-Fi. This is gonna be a pain to try to snake that through. The other end of this wire is straight. So one wire we're gonna have to snake up this way. And what we'll do is we'll use the existing wires from the direct TV and tie them up inside there, pull one out and then pull it this way. But on the new one, you've got this big one that goes on the dish out here. That's gonna be hard to pull through this way so on this wire, we're gonna pull it down that way. So unfortunately, we gotta pull wires different ways and then just snake them out because we know from putting the direct TV in there that that is tough. So gonna get rid of the direct TV. We're gonna get rid of the over the air TV and probably get rid of the wine guard connect here and just clean this all up and make this beautiful. Now we talked about the antenna. This antenna we built and it's got a hydraulic ram that's on here now this goes up and down with a button so we press a button and this thing drops down we'll show you a video of uh, that dropping down and then this actually has the 5g four 5g antennas two wi-fi antennas inside the top there now there is a big difference when we had it down below here and we had the 5g and the wi-fi there was a huge difference when we put this nine foot pole up here so this pole drops down when we go automatically comes up with a push a button when we get going. This all goes to that Peplink router that I showed you. So each one of these antennas goes to one channel of the SIM chips or the Wi-Fi. So this creates Wi-Fi and it brings Wi-Fi in, which is awesome. So with this unit, we can be on the other side of the park and we're still picking up Wi-Fi through the sets on our phone. So really cool unit that uh, we built it here and put in here. So this is cool. We'll put a little bit of information down below of what this unit is, so you can check that out. And we'll also put some information about the uh, Starlink down there, but that's pretty easy. Just go to Starlink, pull up uh, high, def high performance is the satellite that's for there. All right, so we're gonna start pulling off all the die core, get all these bolts up, get these units out of here, and get going. See you in a minute. Okay, so we got this unit off. This is the DirecTV unit, the wine guard in motion. We were gonna take this unit off, but we just decided it's not in the way, it's not gonna block the signal. It's you know over the air, if for some reason you lost everything and you want it over the air, we figured we'd go ahead and leave this because it's already wired. It's already wired into the TVs and everything, so we just decided we're gonna go ahead and leave this. Now this is the coaxial that came from the wine guard uh, in motion for DirecTV. 
So this cable we're just going to uh, leave here. We'll just uh, put a little die core and leave that down. So if for some reason somebody wants to put something else back up here, this cable will still be here and goes down to the junction box to drive the TVs. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're also going to leave the WineGuard Wi-Fi unit that's there because that's all pre-wired and there's a unit down there, so that's absolute worst case backup. Don't need it with this stuff, I'm telling you. With uh, We've been up almost 100% of the time with Starlink, so really don't need this stuff, but it's there, they're wired. Maybe the next owner of this coach wants it, so we're gonna leave those there, but we're getting rid of this, clean up this area, and get this thing down on the deck. All right, so this is where we're gonna mount this unit, and as you can see, it's kind of tilted to the front here. So we got this one, and the one in the back will be tilted to the back, so even though it's tilted a little bit between that way and then the one on that side, they're both grabbing any satellites that'll be in that area. So there's no issue with losing satellites off the horizon that this might not be grabbing from its 45 degrees because the one in the back is grabbing those and then we're bonding those together. And then I'm just getting this out of here far enough to make sure that we're not getting blocked by anything here. This is a great position for this. I can't see any reason why this isn't perfect. And I had some people look at it and they're like, so perfect, good to go. We're going to go ahead and get this mounted. We're going to get the lines run through there, die core this stuff down, and then we'll be inside for the rest of it. All right, so we got the wires run. We had to do it different ways because of the ends. So um, this one's going to the back Starlink. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to basically keep it off the ground. I'm going to have it mounted right here on this wire tie that's screwed in. And then we will wire tie it with little screw holes underneath all the way down to the back of the coach under here. And the uh, reason I'm doing that is I don't want these on the ground. I don't want this here. I want water to be able to run off into the drains. We have the internal drains here, so I want it to run off there. And then this one here for the new one, we're basically going to just keep it on some, I'll show you when we mount them, but there are some little units that we put on the ground here. It keeps it just off the ground a little bit. We'll die core that in and go straight to the unit. Now, all of the 50 feet of cable here, we're going to keep it coiled up up inside here in the ceiling plenty of room inside there so we'll just uh, stuff that in there same thing with this we'll make sure we got enough there and uh, do that so let's go ahead and get these pieces done okay so we've got the line run from downstairs we went down through the cap into the cabinet up to the rear here I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do all this but I just want to kind of show you this is where the gen 2 version is gonna go now this is getting modified we have a mount coming that makes this more of a flat mount. So it'll kind of be more like this sitting here. So it'll be kind of flat, won't be more than this high off the deck. Uh, this pole comes off. The back here gets modified just a bit. And uh, we'll link you to a video, you can see that. But bottom line is we're just grabbing the connection in here, putting it inside the sealed mount that you're gonna see here. And then this will be back here, more flat. And again, so you can see the front one going that way, this one going that way. And then the wires will just die core. And how we're going to do these is we'll die core down the edge. We'll keep this about an inch off the ground here just so that water can roll through here. And it's not a trip hazard or anything. So it'll just be off the ground a little bit. We'll attach it here and then we'll attach it here. And then this is going to go all the way down the coach underneath right here. So we will be drilling a couple small holes in the top here, smaller than these and then uh, wire tying it all along the upside. So why the upside? I don't want it down here, because if I put it down here, water can get caught here or dirt and things can get caught on it. So this will be suspended up underneath here, just like that. You won't even see it. The only place you'll see it is right here. And then it'll go all the way down to the other end. So let's go ahead and get this attached and we'll be back with you. All right, so we're taking the big line for the high, high performance and we're just Pushing it up inside here. This is a big open cavity, as you can see. And we're just gonna let it sit up inside here. Hopefully it doesn't make any noise going down the road. It's all insulation in there, so it should be fine. And then uh, we'll get this thing mounted and uh, this one will be done. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're just gonna start dry fitting what we're gonna have because all this is gonna get die cord, die cord underneath here, die cord across the top and the sides. Um, so these are where the two wires are gonna be coming out. And what you can see here is we're keeping it off the ground. We got a couple really good strong uh, adapters here, or I should say clamps here, that we're gonna die core this to. And then these will come up 
stay off the ground just like this and go down to the satellite dishes just like this. So basically this is what you're going to see right here and then we'll get it all die cored. We're not going to die core anything until everything's checked. Then we uh, check the units, make sure we're getting signal and all that because if we got to pull a wire or something like that then we'll know. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up area and then we'll get them attached to this, the dishes. All right, so I got this measured off and this is straight. I'm putting lines here because I'm gonna put some die core underneath it and I wanna know where we're gonna be doing die core. So obviously I put it around where this is gonna get screwed down in. And then I'll probably just fill this area after so water doesn't get in there. So I'm gonna basically die core all around here and some on the bottom. Cool, let's do it. Okay, so we've got the front one at least wired in here. And I'll show you what we did. So we come out of the cap. We got to go into a couple of secure spots here. We're going to die core around this. So a die core here, die core here, die core here, die core. And then it's coming up and it's staying underneath the track, underneath this. Then we're coming down here. Now I'm only using these electrical guides here as just, uh, just to kind of get it straight, give it a little bit of depth off the top in case some water get, needs to get through there. Some might say, well, you're going to hear that. Well, you don't. Um, usually it's just vibrating, but you don't hear it. If you do, you just come up, put a little more dicor on it. And now I'll dicor over these and these will all be secure and then this unit's ready to go. So that's a nice, clean, simple, easy setup for here. And we're gonna run the rest of the cable for the real one all the way to the back underneath here, just like this. So you can't see it. No water is gonna build up behind it or anything like that. So we're gonna go all the way down to the rear dish and then we'll be done on the roof. All right, let's finish up. All right, so we're pretty much done getting all the wiring done up here on the roof. We're waiting for the mount for this, and then this one will be mounted here. It'll be pointed backwards a little bit, as that one's pointed frontwards a little bit. We've talked about that. So this is just uh, sitting here for now. As you can see, I've got a few pieces here. I've got a wire tie mount here. I'm leaving about an inch of space underneath here so water can flow through. Um, we're all secure here, and then as you can see, it goes all underneath all the way down. So it's not stopping water or getting all in the way and things like that or a tripping hazard or anything. So that's that. Now, we talked about the mount that's coming for this, and this will be here. Now, what we've also done to really take it overboard, because we've already gone overboard in this system, is this mount, when this dish is in it, you can pop the dish out. We have another wire that is down in the cellar underneath. If we get into a situation where for some reason both of these satellites are totally blocked by really thick trees and we can't get any satellite, we could just pop the top, pop this right out of the mount here and go downstairs and there's an extra wire that we can put it out in the yard or the street or somewhere and off like 75 feet to be able to grab it as an emergency. So we have a, a wire on standby in the cellar ready to do that. So that's it for the roof here. So we're going to uh, get things die cord and head down and finish wiring downstairs. See you then. Okay, everything's done on the roof. Everything's die cord, it's drying, and all the wires are ran down here. So as you can see, we've got the big wire from the high performance. Now we had to run it this way because this was the small end. And then this is for the Gen 2. Now, as you can see, we ran it from the bottom up because there was no way we were gonna run this and get it in between the beams and stuff like that. Now, sometimes in these coaches, you kinda of gotta run from light socket to light socket. There's a beam here, you gotta get through the beams. So sometimes it can be really tough. So we had to come down through the cap, which is right about here on the roof that you saw, down into this area, then snake it through into this area, then snake them through into the back. Now that's the hardest part. Now it's really easy to get them over to inside. This is our electronics panel right here, I should say our bay. So this is the router that we talked about. There's all the Cat 6s or Cat 5s that are all connected going throughout the coach. 
all the antennas are connected to it and that's going up to the antenna that you saw going up and down there. This is where the power is going to be, this big one, for the high performance. That's going to mount right up inside there. And then we'll also have the Starlink Gen 2 will be up inside there. And then from there, we'll have our Cat5 cables, the two of them, run into this bonding unit. Um, so again, you got Wi-Fi coming in, bonding, four um, 5G plugs, and we'll go to the interface after and show you when that's all working. and we'll do some speed tests and things. But that's what's going to, all that stuff's going to get mounted right in here, and then that'll be ready to go. So we'll see you when we're done here. All right, everybody, so we've got everything installed. We already talked about the wires, so the wires are coming down off the roof. We had to go from light to light behind here. Everything's wired tied up inside here. We come through hole into what I like to call my electronics bay here. So as you can see, we have the Gen 2 Starlink. Now this is, um, has its own Wi-Fi unit in it, but we also have the adapter for the Ethernet. And I taped these out so I could show them to you. So the Ethernet goes from here, from this, into the router. Here is the high performance unit. No Wi-Fi, but the wire comes out of here, Ethernet. I'm going to step up here and I'm going to show you the, the unit we talked about out there, how it's all hooked up. I'm going to just pull it off. So as you can see here, this is the old Ethernet. So we have the two Ethernets in. So this is the old Starlink. This is the brand new high performance. These are all the Ethernet cables that are running throughout the coach all over the place. These are Wi-Fi ins, Wi-Fi outs, all up in the top here. You might be able to see all of the antennas that are going up to that big antenna that's on the engine, the little uh, hydraulic up there. These are all those Wi-Fi's and there's a GPS in here as well. So this gets all mounted up inside here. That stays there. Our units are here and I'll clean this up. I just wanted to show it to you before we close up the cabinet, but that is all of our internet right here. And now we'll go over on the screen. We'll pull a the coach outside the hangar here move a couple planes out of the way we'll get it out and we'll go to the screen and we'll show you how this unit works and bonds all this stuff together so everything is connected everything's wired we've got the dishes on the ceiling we've got all the software updated on them and things and then this is the pep wave dashboard and as you can see right now we have the high performance starlink that is connected by uh, ethernet and then the gen 2 starlink connected by the ethernet now here's all the other ones. There's Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 2, here's Verizon 1, Verizon 2, AT&T. So if, if I want to have all of these running or have all these cards or even pick up a Wi-Fi, I just bring up all the things. So if I'm in a, in a park, I can get a couple Wi-Fi's from the park, or if I'm in my Tiki, I can grab the Tiki Wi-Fi or wherever. And then I can also tell it to go ahead and bring up the Verizon SIM chip if I need it. So you can have all of these up here running and then it'll bond all these signals. Now, just a second ago, we just ran, we had about 162 MIPS on uh, Starlink, 150 MIPS on that. And then if I did a speed test on all these, it would combine all those. Now, it's not a one for one combine. If you got 150 on one and 150 on the other, when you're bonding, it doesn't mean you're gonna get 300 because there is a little bit of an overhead. I think it's like maybe 15, 20% overhead. So you're gonna be a little below 300 while you're bonding. Um, but anyway, so uh, I don't have a chip in there right now. I'm going to back these out of here with no Wi-Fi here at the airport. So right now we're just running our two Starlink satellites. So this is how this unit uh, works. And you can change all the parameters in this peplink. You can have it priority. You can have it low latency. So it'll prioritize whatever's the lowest latency of the dishes. And it adjusts all that stuff on the fly. So PepWave has a great system here. I'm not going to go through all the advanced stuff. PepWave has a whole bunch of stuff on there. But we're just showing you that we're up and running with our high performance and our Gen 2 that's on the back. And they're bonding right now. So let's go out and uh, wrap up. Hey, everybody. Well, good news. We've got the 3D printing done for the mount for the Gen 2 Starlink receiver and you know, this is the one going on the back here We've been talking about but I'm going to show you a little bit about this and how it's made and what we need to do To get this all installed. So first of all first and foremost why there are six pieces well for the 3d printer You know, it's hard to print something this big unless you have a really big 3d printer But so this we did it in six different pieces and then we put them together with angle channels here So these are just normal aluminum 
angle channels are going to put this together. You can kind of see how they're going to come together here with, uh, we just screw through here. We already have indents on the bottom of these. You can see right here the indents where they come down over the top. This gets screwed in so it's nice and tight. We seal these up. We'll seal it up with die core and things. Then these will get mounted on the actual roof, screw through here, die core the whole thing. And that's how this is going to actually get made. So you can see it's a set so that you get the wind from driving down the street that go off the top of it. How this is going to have to happen is when this gets put on here, it'll basically sit inside just like this here. You can kind of see how that all fits and sits and then it'll fit nice on the roof and you'll see it here when we're, we're finished in a couple minutes. Now what we have to do on this unit is we have to cut a slit into here and we pull out the little motor section. So this will come out, the pole will come out, the motor section will come out of here. There's two wires that go to the motor. We'll cut those two wires. And then this wire, which will be where we connect to the satellite to, will still stay inside here. We'll seal up the back of this, and then this will drop right down inside uh, of this unit. So we're going to go ahead and then bolt this all up, get it all uh, glued up, and drilled together. And before I do that, we're going to spray these with a UV-resistant paint just to make sure the sun doesn't break down on uh, these 3D printed models. It shouldn't be. We've had this stuff out in the sun in South Florida for years and it's been fine. But just to double check and just to make sure, we're gonna spray these and make sure we don't have a problem with it. Okay, everybody, so that is a wrap on this project on the coach. Now, I'm gonna go into some variables on what we talked about. This is a little overkill on what we did. But before I do that, we're done with RVing for today. We're gonna jump in the plane and go do some flying. So if you haven't checked out E3 Aviation, Head out over to E3 Aviation. Also, E3 RVing, a lot more detailed courses, like physical courses and live in-person courses. And then, of course, like and subscribe here at E3 Camping. But the system we just installed, major overkill. I mean, today with Starlink, you can really get away with just, even if you went to the high performance, they're a little more expensive, $2,500. Um, but even just that has been doing really good on these coaches. But we did the two separate ones, one up front paint looking forward, one in the back looking backwards. Um, goes into a bonding router. So we talked about the PepWave uh, Max 4 HD or HD4. And there's four 5G SIM cards in there. Two Wi-Fi's coming in. That antenna up top creates a Wi-Fi for us. But for now, I'm done with RVing. We're gonna go take some flying. See you on the next one. Take care.